here from WP Elevation and welcome to another live stream. We are live streaming every day this week and uh, as far as I can see we are live. Just let me know in the comments if you can see me and hear me and uh, if all the technology is working. Um, I'm very excited to be bringing this to you. In fact, I want to get to know a little bit about you guys who are watching this. So if you can see me and if you can hear me, please just let me know in the comments, uh, which country are you from? Tell me which country you are from in the comments. Uh, Louis Basto says live, Thomas Taggart says live, Monte Cristo says, hey legends. Ida Sentner says live, hey Ida, by the way, I believe you just picked up the Facebook Ads Accelerator course from us, is that right? I got a notification on my phone early this morning. Uh, if that's true, congratulations, well done, you're a legend. Angie Neal says hello, awesome. Uh, let me know uh, where you, which country you are from in the comments. Uh, ben Siegfried says, yes, hello, loud and clear, can uh, see me and hear me, which is excellent. Uh, let me know which country you are from in the comments so I can get a, a, an idea of where you guys are from. Robert Mecklen says, see no evil, hear no evil. Just hit refresh, Robert. Uh, the other thing is, if you want to know when we are going live this week, if you want to get notified of when we are going live, just drop the word live in the comments and we will ping you via Facebook Messenger and let you know when we are going live. Brett Drinkwater is here. Greg Harvey is here from the USA. Hey, Greg, how you doing, my friend? Uh, Angie Neal is here from Australia. Robert Mecklen from the USA. Ben from the United States. Keith from Japan. Kyle is back from Trinidad and Tobago. Monte Cristo is from Adelaide, my hometown. Thomas Taggart is here from Texas. A country of its own, he says. Uh, Ida Sentner is from Atlanta. There we go, perfect. Nick Coupland from Brisbane. Brian Sylvester live from Utah. Awesome. <laughs> WP Elevation are here, all the way from Chapel Street in Pran. Uh, Nancy Seeger is here from Virginia. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, good stuff. All right, so I am super, super excited because today I am being joined by my good friend, Adam Silverman, all the way from Tennessee. And I do believe we have Adam on the line. Hey, buddy, how are you? Hey, how's it going, Troy? Awesome. Thanks for joining us, man. I really appreciate you doing this. Uh, for those that don't know, tell us a little bit about who you are and uh, what you do at Mule Town Digital. Yeah, so I'm Adam Silverman. Like Troy said, I'm from Williamsport, Tennessee, which is a little south of south of Nashville out here in the country land. Um, and uh, Mule Town Digital has kind of grown into a full service digital agency. So we do everything from you know, web builds to SEO to paid ads to, you know, whatever our clients need and uh, been in business for coming on a year and a half now. So youngster in the business, but but yeah, it's pretty awesome, man. Loving it. That's awesome. And uh, you, just to clarify, you run the business from home, right? Just tell us a little bit about your setup there at home. You, you're, on a, you're on a farm, is that right? Or like a large block of land? I am. Yeah, we're so my wife runs a uh, horseback riding and training and boarding business off of our property. So huh. we own 30 acres here and then care for close to a thousand. So our horses run from here to pretty much the other side of the county. <laughs> so so um, it's it's pretty great. And so, yeah, when, when we bought it's actually her mom and dad's farm, we bought this farm from them. And, uh, when we moved in, I built a space because when we moved, I was still drumming a lot. I was a professional drummer out of Nashville for close to 15 years. And wow. so I built a drum studio off of the house, which became my drum studio and office. And so, yeah, it's like, I work in the middle of this giant horse farm in an office that's full of drums. And, <laughs> as you can see, there's some of them behind me. Let me so, just, yeah, let me, there we go. Um, let me just, I'm all from home. Awesome. Let me just bounce back to that other screen so people can see the beautiful collection of snare drums behind you there. Uh, and we, we share a passion for, uh, for music and we've had many conversations about music and uh, I do believe a uh, secret squirrel land that we might even be collaborating on a little project together just for fun. So uh, <laughs> keep your eyes and ears out for that one. Um, let, now, talk, let me t let's talk about your family situation. You've got three kids, is that right? Yeah, three kids, three boys, yep. And uh, talk to me about working, uh, the, the benefits of being able to run the business from home and the time and the flexibility that that affords you to spend time with the kids. Yeah, so I mean, I used to drive, when I first started this business, I had an office up in Franklin and it was 
like a solid hour drive up and back each way. So I spent two hours a day in the car and as much as I love podcasts and everything, it got kind of old doing that drive. And so um, since I started this business, I've been all at home. And so it's awesome. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool to go down at lunchtime and the boys are still up, you know, my little ones are three and two. And so they're just getting ready to eat lunch and they're playing and I get to go see them and I put them down for their nap. And, you know, it's, it's a really nice, like, you know, I don't waste that time. You know, before it just felt very much like, geez, I'm just running this time, just sitting in my car. Yeah. Especially when they're little, you know, they're not little that long. (laughs) That's right. And they're just, that commute, man, they're just hours of your life that you never get back. You, you just, you, um, did, did you just say that both your, your three and two year old boys still nap during the day? Is, is that right? Oh, yeah. They, they, yeah. Well, they're on our farm, so they actually like go out with my wife all morning to feed and stuff. So oh, wow. uh, they, they sleep almost three hours a day. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm so jealous, man. I'm so jealous. Oscar dropped his day nap like before he was two. Oh. Yeah, man. Before he was two, he was like, no good, I'm done. I mean, the kid barely sleeps. He's just like so into everything. He barely sleeps. So yeah, um, they, you know, they get him to sleep at daycare, but we can't get him to sleep at home. And he's like, no way, man. Your mum and dad are home and the sun's out and I'm going out the trampoline. I'm not sleeping. Uh, that's awesome. Um, but I totally hear you. Like just being able to walk out of the, the home studio here into the kitchen and have lunch with my wife and Oscar and little Goldie, our newborn, uh, every day is just amazing. I mean, they're just, and what I realise is because I've been working out of an office for the last probably four or five years on and off, before that I was working from home, but now that I'm back at home, you realise that when you're at the office, there are all these little moments that you miss during the day with your kids. And I just cherish those moments. And and it's not rainbows and unicorns. I mean, every now and then Oscar walks in and kind of interrupts me on a call and that's just part you know that's just life that's what it is i just say hi and acknowledge him and say to the person on the call hey this is oscar say hi and that's just a part of working from home but uh i i'm very reluctant to go back to the office i think i've i've really adapted to working from home again and i absolutely love it yeah i I know i oh go ahead sorry no you go I was just going to say, I was actually i was on a, a zoom call with one of my corporate clients a fairly large client and all of a sudden I said, hey, guys, I, I need to run. I'll, I'll call you right back. And when I came back up to Zoom, they were all like, what happened? I said, oh, I was looking out the window and I saw my two-year-old coming down the driveway with one of those big wrenches, you know, like one of a, like a pipe wrench. He was coming towards the garage where my car is with a wrench. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, so I jumped off this and they were all dying laughing. You know, they're just like, yeah, yeah. I mean, so it, it is not interruption free. That's for sure. There's yeah. always something. It's like they come running in when I'm on a call or something. But I think especially with just the state of the world right now, people are pretty understanding of, um, of that. And, you know, it humanizes us a little bit, I, I think, was, too. You took the words right out of my mouth, man. I was going to say it humanizes it. Um, talk to me about the, the uh, you know, have you... This is a loaded question because I know you have, because I know we've had this conversation, but how do you deal with imposter syndrome, dealing with clients, wanting to charge them good fees for your project? We'll talk a little bit in a moment, but you've got a team, so it's not like you're building websites for 500 bucks. How do you get over that imposter syndrome of working from home and you feel like you don't have a big office behind you? And you know, how, what have you had to do to kind of get your headspace through that? Yeah, I mean, so I think uh, actually uh, uh, Sammy, who might, I think is coming on at some point, but her and I kind of talked a little bit about this before when when you have, when I moved from being a solo developer, which is how I started in the business, I started at a web hosting company and ended up becoming a dev and then built this business. When I moved out of being the technician guy and became a business owner, I realized how talented the people that I was hiring are. And so for me, it became less about, well, Adam's awesome and Adam deserves big money. And it became more about, well, I'm helping employ people. I'm paying their salaries and I have to charge people or I can't afford these other people, right? There's no way to pay a really good ops person or, or designer or dev in the States. I mean, you're, you're spending for sure spending money. Mm. So you know, I had to like, honestly learn to value. It was easier for me to value them. Mm. And then after I learned how to do that, it's become easier for me to say, wait, like I'm the boss. If the client really wants to spend two hours with me, 
they're going to have to pay because that means I'm not doing all these other things that I should be doing in the business. So I think for me, that was the transition, but I definitely, for anyone listening, if you struggle with it, I think, I think honestly, if we're all honest, we totally do. But when you start to put that, like, let's just say you have a vendor and they cost you 30 bucks an hour and you know, they're worth it. You can't feel bad about charging 60, 80, a hundred, 150. There's all this work that you had to do to even get that vendor working. So it's to me, that was the way that I kind of got over it. Yeah, that's such a great mindset, man. Um, I don't imagine that you were like that from the beginning though, right? I imagine that you were, you know, you, you just said something really interesting that if, you know, if you're the boss now and you've got these other, this team that you're responsible for and somebody wants to spend two hours picking your brain, they're going to have to pay a premium for that because that two hours that you're no longer spent working on the business and nurturing the team and giving them what they need and helping them build that culture and that vision. But I don't imagine you always like that. I imagine because you were, you were basically a freelance developer before you decided to grow the business. How much time were you giving away for free when you were just a freelance developer? Oh, I mean, tons of time, you know, just people wanting to ask me how I would do something was the big thing. Like, you know, they didn't really have a project. They would just come to me and say, well, Adam, if you were going to build into this API, like, how would you do it? And I'm like, <laughs> well, I have to go look at their API and study their docs. And I would come back and tell them, well, this is how I would do it. And it'd probably take 30 hours. So it's going to be, you know, five grand or whatever it's going to be. And then the client would, the projects would just fall off. And I just found that, uh, one of the very first things I implemented in Mule Town Digital was like, we call it a technical discovery, but it's like, if you're going to do anything that involves us connecting to an API or a gateway or anything, we absolutely have to do this whole, it's like a 1500 or $2,000 process. It's like, I got to answer all these questions and it takes my brain power away from business growth. And there's no one else on my team that can do it. So I had to put a higher value on that because like you said, it takes me out of, of my team. They're asking me where I am and I'm on a three hour long, you know, tunnel vision studying, you know, what we're going to do with this Stripe API or whatever. That's where it got, you know, got hard for me to do. So it, it didn't take me long once I, once I had a team that didn't take long at all. But before I used to probably, I would say 10 hours out of my week was dedicated to just throwing time away at, can I borrow your brain or how would you do this or what would this cost? And I just stopped doing it now. Yeah, awesome. Well done. I'll see if I can cue the right sound effect here. No, wrong sound effect. This is the right one. <laughs> uh, three cheers for Adam Silverman. Stop giving away your IP for free and start charging for your time because you're worth it. Uh, going to unpack a little bit more about that in a second. Um, also, for those watching, if you just a quick reminder, if you want to get notified when we're going live this week, we are live every day this week. We'll be live again tomorrow talking about the uh, the entire matrix, the the uh, the business from home, getting clients from home matrix, uh, and and really revealing the complete method for landing good quality clients from home. Uh, that's coming up tomorrow. If you want to get notified, just drop the word live in the comments and we will notify you via uh, Facebook Messenger. Um, talk to me about, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the team and then I do want to address the elephant in the room, which is COVID and how you've managed to get through that, that period. So uh, you started this business uh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, did you start hiring teams straight away or did you kind of just get overwhelmed and then start bringing people on? Yeah, I, I, I got overwhelmed pretty fast um, because one of the businesses that I was a dev for kind of changed direction and, and they lost a lot of their clients and those clients were looking to be picked up somewhere. So I kind of came out of the gate with clients. And so uh, because I have no design skills whatsoever, like I, I could, I only open sketch to get assets out, right? Like I can't, <laughs> I can't create anything. So I immediately was like, I need to hire a designer. And so since that agency kind of had stopped moving forward, the designer was available and I hired her pretty much straight out. So it was her and I, and then I found out, well, I'm really not good at managing projects very well either. So I started looking for a project manager and filled that role. And then I figured, well, what's the next thing is marketing. So I eventually, I have an outside like sales and marketing consultant and she helps with facilitating new business and you know so my role has changed a lot in the last year and a half for sure but for me 
the whole point of the business for me was to have a team for me that was local um, that I could be in contact with like personally that it wasn't an all remote team. Um, I really wanted that just for my life and my business. I wanted the community. So it was a big part of why I started this business was to have, you know, to work with people that I've respected. So, and uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, COVID. Obviously, the, the world went sideways in mid-March. How has that impacted you and what changes have you had to make and, and how have you kind of got through it from a headspace point of view? Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, we're all friends, so I'll be totally honest. You know, we had gotten to the place where we were starting to get so many referrals and we had built up a, a good size six-figure pipeline that COVID just kind of came in and just crushed. And what I learned in that was I had to go back to, we call it you, in Mavs, it's like the true north or the straight north. It's like the thing that I wanted. I had to come back to that and ask myself, what is it I really want out of this business? And I like corporate work and I enjoy those businesses, but I'm in a community that really needs a lot of help in the digital space. And so for me, I pivoted and started offering care plans and small SEO packages and website refreshes and consulting and just little things to our local businesses here. And I got really involved in our chamber of commerce. And that's kind of been more my focus for the last few months is like, how do I help grow these smaller businesses? Um, and, you know, it kind of grabbed a piece of my heart a little bit. It, it, it Once I started doing that type of work and you see a small business go from like no phone calls to 30 or 40. It's that's a big, big deal for some of these small businesses. It would be a big deal for us to go from, you yeah. know, 10 to 30 phone calls. So, you know, I've kind of found a different purpose, I guess, through the process. It, it's not like we're telling corporate, you know, clients no, but they were the first ones to back off and small businesses kind of went, I have to do something. So like, it was good to be able to help them. And uh, now we've kind of found a little bit of a niche here where we live, just helping these small businesses. So it's it's been pretty cool. Awesome. A couple of things I want to unpack here. First of all, one, you're still in business, right? And you, you're still employing staff and you're still functioning. Uh, I know you and I have had conversations in, in private channels in our Mavericks Club Mastermind. Uh, Adam is a member of our Mavericks Club Mastermind. And I know that that community has been super, super important for everyone in Mavericks Club to, as a support mechanism to help us get through this. But the other thing I just want to touch on that you talked about there is that you had a six-figure pipeline, right? Most people watching this, I'm going to make a bit of a generalization, but most people watching this would fantasize and dream about having a six-figure pipeline, right? Um, working from home, like how did, how did, how does that happen? Talk, talk. I mean, sure, it, you, you've you've definitely hurt during coronavirus. We're, we're all hurting. Everyone's taken a hit, so it's not all rainbows and unicorns. But you had a six-figure pipeline. How did you get there? Yeah, I mean, so I think for me, mentally, I've had to keep telling myself, "Hey, you did this once, right? Like <laughs> the world changed, but it can be done again." And honestly, it was just referrals and you know hustling at getting content out to people, like. For a long time, I worked for a lot of businesses that did what I call hope marketing, which is like they kind of sit home and they hope that somebody is going to contact them. And I, what I had started doing with my marketing and salesperson, Kaylin, we had started going after the Chamber of Commerce and started e-blasting them and sending them, hey, you, is your website working for your business? Is it actually doing anything for you? Um, and we got a good response out of that. And then some of our corporate clients – started handing us off to non-competitive corporate clients. So it was mm -hmm. like all of a sudden I had just, I had started offering more value to them. So instead of just doing the design and development, they would start to pull me into strategic meetings where we're like on the phone with Budweiser or Walmart or HelloFresh or these big companies. And I started providing the marketing directors there with real value. And then they started saying to their friend in a different business, hey, my friend Adam at Milltown Digital is doing all these cool things with us. And his team then takes the project and goes and those handoffs happened. And so that was where things just really started to 
to to rumble. So it was like a an outward go get it, and also just like how can I be valuable? And it's hard. It's like when you first start doing that, you're like, well, I'm giving my time away. Like we talked about, I don't want to do that. But there's for me, there's contacts that I just go, I'm going to give you what you want or need because I know that those guys have connections that can pull me in. And that's basically what happened. Totally. And it's a strategic decision if you, and it's, and it's different from a client who you know probably doesn't have $5,000 to build a website wanting to just jump on the phone and pick your brain for an hour. That's a different proposition right. than an existing client introducing you to uh, you know, one of their partners who's a big corporate, I mean, that's a strategic decision to get in that meeting and just add value and position yourself. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a good play. Yeah. A um, couple of minutes left. Uh, I want to talk about uh, how do you switch off? How do you make the transition between family life and working life if it's on the same block of land? Yeah, so for me, uh, my wife and I have had some hard discussions about this because <laughs> I come home and I'm all like, oh, we did this really cool local SEO thing. And we did, and my wife's like, I have no idea what you're saying to me, right? Like, and so she, when when all this stuff with COVID started and, and we were home, one day after I came in from work and I kind of was driving her crazy, she was like, I would like for you to play drums for 30 minutes before you come inside. Like just... <laughs> finish your work day and just take 30 and like play some songs and just, and it, it honestly, uh, helped. Oh, man. It just helped. I was like, I just went totally. from, I'm all in this work mode to yeah. I'm going to play a little bit and have some fun. And then when I went inside, I was able to like sit with her and my kids and, and put my phone away because as yeah. much as I love being available, you know, I'm getting uptime notifications and things are texting me and I've had to learn to just, when I'm done drumming, my phone goes away when I go in the house and, you know, my team members know if they need me, they can, you know, they can drive over here. Right. I'm not, I just put it away. So for me that worked like taking a walk would do it. Some push ups, just something to be like, I'm no longer in my work world until tomorrow. Yeah. So that that's kind of how I've done it. Love it. Your wife is very, very wise, and uh, she has just done you both a massive favor. And what a, what a, what such a generous act and such a beautiful gesture to encourage you to do something that you love so much to make that transition between work and family life. Uh, very wise lady, your wife. You're a very lucky man. Yes, sir. Awesome. Hey, Adam Silverman, this has been super fun. We're out of time because I'm just about to get Sammy J on the yeah. call, but I do want to say a huge thank you uh, for doing this. And uh, uh, yeah, where can people reach out and say hi? Yeah, you can hit me on, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, I'm on all the things, LinkedIn. And uh, just, yeah, be encouraged, guys. Like, it's all doable. You just, if you're willing to work for it, man, you can get wherever you want to get to. So just put your heads down and keep hustling, man. Awesome. Love it. Thanks, man. And I'll uh, look forward right. to seeing you in a couple of weeks at, uh, at the Mavericks event. Awesome. We'll see you. Thanks, Troy. Cool. Thanks, Adam. All right. That Bye -bye. is uh, Adam Silverman, ladies and gentlemen. I do need to uh, just uh, switch out calls here and we're going to be having uh, Samantha Johnston from Southern California dialing in any second. Hey, give me a like uh, in the comments. And if this is useful, if this is valuable, if you're enjoying this and you want us to keep going, just give me a yes in the comments. That would be super helpful. Yeah, give me a yes in the comments if this is useful, if you're finding this helpful, and if you want us to keep doing this, give me a yes in the comments because uh, that's the way that we get feedback that what we're doing here is helping and it really encourages all of us to keep going, keep getting out of bed every day and doing these live streams uh, to help you guys. So just give us a yes in the comments. And we are seconds away from being joined by Samantha Johnston, who I do believe is kind of uh, in the green room and almost ready, so I'm gonna dial her in in uh, a couple of minutes. Uh, loved that. Thanks, Adam, says Monte Cristo. Gonna bring that up here. Loved that. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, he's an absolute gentleman, absolute sweetheart. Adam, when I met him in San Diego in February at our Mavericks Club Mastermind event, uh, we just had a really great connection and everyone just fell in love with Adam. He's just such a sweetheart. So uh, super um, uh, appreciative that he was able to jump on this morning and share a bit of his story with us. All right, I am going to... Uh, call in Samantha Johnston, 
Uh, so let me just uh, bring her in. There's the sound of Skype. And I'm sure you guys can hear that. All righty. Here we go. There is Sammy J. All right. Hey, Sammy J. I'm just going to bring your title screen <laughs> up on the on the live here. Uh, we have Samantha Johnson all the way from Southern California joining us here live on Skype. Hey, Samantha, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm really well. Uh, guys, just give us a, uh, a, a yes in the comments if you can see and hear Samantha okay. Just give us a yes in the comments to let us know uh, uh, that you can see and hear Samantha okay. Now, Samantha, for those that have no idea who you are or where you're from or what you do, give us a, a, the elevator pitch. Who is Samantha Johnston? Why are you here and what is it that you do? Um, so uh, I reside in Southern California, as you shared with everybody, uh, beautiful, sunny Southern California where it is super hot right now. Um, I have two small kids that are six and 10 and I run a boutique agency that does branding, web design and membership sites uh, for female online entrepreneurs. Uh, oh, I cannot tell you how much I love the fact that you can articulate that and that you don't say, we build websites. <laughs> I love the fact that you, it's just so rewarding to hear someone who is so clear about what they do. Um, uh, let's just let's just go back a little bit, right? What were you doing before? Like, how did you get into this? Uh, you've got two kids. You work from home. Your hands are obviously very full. How did you get? How did you make a decision that you know what? I'm going to run a business from home while I've got two kids. You crazy person. Well, well, how much time do we have? It's kind of a long story. <laughs> um, no, I I actually uh, did not think I would be where I am today. Um, I had a friend that I used to dream of running a business, but we didn't dream of like what that business was. It was more, we just didn't like working for other people. Um, so we dreamt of what it would be like to be the boss and to be the cool boss that everybody would want to work with and create that awesome environment. Um, but I never dreamt that that would ever happen. I didn't think about how it could happen um, until I had my daughter in 2009. And I was techie and I loved to play with stuff. And as my friend and I had always been dreaming up these fake businesses that we could run, um, I started building websites. And I had a friend of my mom who was a teacher wanting to do photography on the summers and said, hey, could you build me a website so I could make some extra money? So I did that and I found WordPress and I loved it. Um, and then eventually I had another old coworker come to me and say, Hey, I have a friend who wants to sell these t-shirts to like drifters. Um, could you help him build a website? And I was like, huh, well, this is kind of interesting. Sure. I, I can do this. Um, and so by 2013, I was in a day job that I hated. Um, I couldn't stand the people I worked for. There was too much of the office politics going on. And he said, she said gossip. And I came home and I just had a really crappy day. And my husband looked at me and he said, you're making about half what you make in your take home right now. Let's just figure it out. Like go in and quit tomorrow. Wow. And so we took a gigantic leap of faith. We had zero savings. And I probably spent the next couple of years like treading water, trying to figure out what the heck I was doing. Um, but eventually, uh, came back, settled on, okay, I'm, I'm doing websites and I love it and I know who I'm doing it for. And then it was a matter of figuring out like, okay, it's not a hobby. I actually need to make this make money because I've had the luxury of having my husband have a job that I didn't have to do any of this if I didn't want to. Mm. Um, and so we landed here where I am now. Um, mm. And two years ago became a Mav with you and it's kind of been a whole other adventure since then. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so complete transparency, uh, Samantha Johnston is a Mavericks Club Mastermind member, as was Adam Silverman. Uh, so I just want to be transparent about that. A question for you, it, like, you know, your husband's got this job. You said that, you know, you, you didn't have any savings. You didn't need the money. Why do it? Like, why why do this if you didn't, like, I mean, sure, the, the money is good, right? But, I mean, you weren't <laughs> destitute. You weren't going to go hungry. So why do this? Well, in the beginning, we needed the money. Um, but as time came on, I mean, my husband now makes double what he made when I left. So oh. he has a job where he made, he got lots of raises wow. in between. Um, so we definitely don't need me to do it now. And that was oh. actually one of the things Go that husband. we, 
Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we discovered along the way, one of the ways to make it work for us so that I could have the stress-free mindset to be able to build the business the right way, as opposed to in the, holy crap, I have to make money. How am I going to do this desperate way? Um, mm. So what we did was we cut me out of the budget. And supposed mm. to, we started off where we said, okay, we think I'm going to make this much. And then if I didn't make that much, we were short something for the month. And so uh, we took me out of the budget probably within the first six months to a year. And ever since then, we were able to figure out how to make it work. And then eventually we made it to the point where I don't have to do it, but I love what I do. Yeah. Um, I love, I love people. I, uh, as much as I love my children, I could not solely be a stay at home mother. Yeah. <laughs> that cannot be yeah. my only thing. Yeah. Um, so I love what I do. And that's, uh, I, I love, I love being around people. I'm definitely an extrovert. So I have to have that, that connection. Yes. Uh, we, I, we've traveled a little bit and, um, we have Oscar who's almost three. We now have Goldie who's, uh, four and a half weeks. And, but when Oscar was really little, we traveled a little bit and my wife went to a couple of trainings interstate and I had to look after Oscar on my own for like two days while she was at this workshop. And at the end of two days, I said, I, I'm so clear about one thing. I cannot be a full-time stay-at-home dad. I, that is just not in me. There is no freaking way that is going to happen. So I just want to put that on the table right now. If that is part of your future plan, we need to have a conversation about it right now because I cannot do it. And I take my hat off to anyone who can be a stay home, full-time stay at home parent. I absolutely, you have got my utmost respect because it would, I love him so much, but it would drive me nuts. I just, I yeah. need, I need some, some adult interaction. And my wife's the same. She's just far more resilient and patient than I am. Um, so she's managed to do it pretty much for the first 12 months of, of Oscar's life. She was just a full-time stay at home mum uh, and went a little bit stir crazy and came out of that going, oh my God, I need some adults to talk to me. Yes. Exactly. And I mean, even running your own business with small kids, like I remember when I started with my daughter, when I very first went full time, finding that balance of getting that adult conversation, because yeah. being a solo entrepreneur versus having a team, yeah. you don't get that constant interaction. So even then you're like, where's adult time? I mean, my husband would come home and it was me like, verbally vomiting yep. on him yep. because yeah, I yeah, hadn't yeah. talked to anybody that totally. was an adult all day. <clears throat> totally. And it's really interesting. I would come home from the office and I'd be so pumped and jazzed about what was going on in Mavericks and WP Elevation. And my, my wife would be like, here, change this nappy. And I'm like, oh, hang on a second. There's all this really cool stuff I want to talk to you about. And she's like, change this nappy. I'm going to have a shower. <laughs> oh. um, so talk to me about, so uh, I want to talk a little bit about the mindset of working from home. I know we've talked about imposter syndrome. Everyone talks about imposter syndrome. So let's just talk about the elephant in the room. How do you get over that, uh, that feeling of, you know, I'm not, you know, like who's going to, who's going to hire me to do this job? Who's going to contract us? Who's going to hire us to work on this project? Because we're just like, we just, we just work from home. We're not a real thing. How have you managed to work through that mindset over the years? So it's a little bit different now than it was in the beginning. So in the beginning, what I did was I had what I called my love file. It's something that I kind of stole from my mom. My mom, uh, when we were kids, she took everything that we created that was like a special card or something, you know, all those like Mother's Day things you do at, at school or an art project. And she put them in this file so that when she was having a down day, mm. she would go back and review all of these things that made her feel good. Oh, so and good. so I kind of did the same thing with my projects. So yeah. every kind thing a previous client had said or, you know, somebody who had, I'd helped along the way had given to me, I put it in this like digital file where if I started to get that imposter syndrome, I could go back and go, well, no, look, so-and-so said this and this person said this and be like, I can't be an imposter if these people think these things of me. So I, I allowed other people's <laughs> yeah. uh, visions of me to, to help bolster me up. Um, as time's gone on, growing a team has helped tenfold because as um, I was watching Adam <laughs> while I was waiting, uh, as Adam mentioned, when you have a team, you think a lot more of the team and you know they're not imposters. So it's a lot easier to be like, well, I'm not an imposter because I've got all these awesome people with me. Yeah. Um, so it, it's definitely, it shifted over the years how I get over it. But in all honesty, I've just slowly had this uh, flip of a switch. Um, I... For me, I think one of my biggest imposter syndromes was I don't have a college degree. 
Mm. Um, so I went to yep. an event in 2016 and, uh, and th that was one of my biggest struggles was why would somebody pay me if I don't have a college degree and they could go get this other person who does. And, um, I went to this event and this gal said something along the lines of like, what is something that you think is your biggest weakness and how can you turn it into your biggest strength? And so that immediately was what came to mind. And I thought, how can I turn that into a strength? And what I came out of it was, well, when you go to college, sure, they tell you a lot of best practices and they teach you how to use different tools, but they give you a lot of the answers, so to speak. Like you're, you're getting it from a textbook or a teacher showing you how to do something. When you're self-taught, you have to go figure it out. So you end up becoming that problem solver. And I was like, okay, so that's, that's what I can draw from this. And I started pulling things out and that flipped the script for me a lot in the imposter syndrome yeah. was what, what do I see as a weakness that could really be a, a strength instead? I love that so much. Uh, two of the things when Oscar was born, I remember, you know, when you have kids, you have these epiphanies, right? And like the minute you have kids, you're like, oh my God, I want to be like the best version of myself I can be. And so I kind of went into overdrive and I remember saying to my wife, the two things that I want to teach my kids more than anything, I think are the two most important skills that you can foster to become an adult. Because let's face it, being an adult is, is freaking hard work sometimes. And we don't ask for it. It's just thrust upon us. And for a lot of us, it takes a long time to figure it out. And I think two of the most important skills that I've learned over the years that I want to instill in my kids are resourcefulness and resilience. And I'm a university dropout. And I've figured this out myself. And I resource, I've always been really resourceful, always been really resourceful. Even when I was a kid and I wanted to play cricket in the backyard and my brother wasn't around if he was like studying or if he was, you know, at school and I was like in the backyard on my own, I would like throw a ball against a brick wall and it would come back to me. And then I would use a bat and I would play the shot. And then I would have this blackboard with all the players' names on the blackboard and I would, I would run a scoreboard and I would play like full day cricket matches on my own. So I've always been really resourceful. <laughs> But resilience has definitely taken me a long time to figure out. And I reckon it was probably, in all transparency, probably in my mid-30s before I figured out how to become emotionally resilient. And I love that, that, that you've, if, by figuring stuff out yourself, you do become a problem solver. You're able to think on your feet a lot quicker than mm -hmm. uh, maybe than, 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 than if it was spoon-fed to you over the years. Oh, yeah, 100%. And I'd build into that, too. Perseverance would be the other thing I'd add to mm. your two things. Yeah. Um, just keep going, just, uh, not even having to survive things, but just if there's a wall in front of you, just keep trying to figure out a way around or over it Yeah. or totally. under for that matter. <laughs> um, if you're watching this and you want to get notified when we go live, just drop the word live in the comments and we will notify you via Facebook messenger the next time we go live, which happens to be tomorrow. Uh, so just drop the word live in the comments to get those notifications. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit more now about the, the kind of the tactical side of, uh, of doing this, how do you f how do you get yourself in front of clients? How do you get yourself in front of leads and start that conversation about potentially working together? So um, I've been a little bit of a black sheep in this uh, arena, I think, because I've never really done the traditional marketing. Um, I don't run Facebook ads. My social media presence is, uh, <laughs> for lack of a better word, um, what I've always done and and what's worked for me is I seriously just put myself in front of them um, I get involved in the spaces where they are so a lot of people will say find out where your ideal client is and be there and that's what I did unknowingly in the beginning um, and it's what I've continued to do so I join a membership uh, program so that I can be in a program where people are building memberships who will eventually need my assistance I get involved in groups where female entrepreneurs are asking for advice or getting coaching and they're going to need to build a website or otherwise. So I make sure that I'm there and then I give as much value as I can. So without obviously giving away the farm. Um, so I just, I answer questions. Hey, something isn't working. Great. Drop the link. Let me go look at it. Or, Hey, I'm trying to do X, Y, and Z with my site. So I'll grab a built with and be like, okay, well, it looks like your site has blah, blah, blah on it. And if you added this, you could do it, or this that you already have on your site can do it. Um, simple little answers. I try to find like a five, you know, five minute or less thing where I can answer somebody's question, 
and show them the value that I can bring and then have conversations with them. Uh, one of the best examples was I started showing up. So I, I joined Stu McLaren's tribe uh, to see his strategies behind a membership because I know it's a super popular program and I wanted to hear what he had to say um, and then be able to say, hey, I've gone through it. I can totally help you execute what Stu just taught you. Mm -hmm. uh, so I joined that and I started just answering people's questions because of course that stops everybody. They're supposed to be talking about content and instead they're talking about, but how am I going to deliver this? Mm -hmm. And so I started just talking about the different ways and different things. And I, one person PM'd me and she said, well, I've got this and this. And I said, honestly, you're not ready for a site. You should probably just do like a Facebook group. You've kind of got, you're kind of in the beta launch, run it there, use the units. This is how you do it. And then once you have enough members, you can come back and we can build you a site. And she's like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. She's like, you're not in my budget now, but I'm totally coming back to you when I'm ready. And it was, I told her to go do something free. And there's a difference between, yeah. so we always talk about not doing free discovery sessions, right? But there's a difference between, yeah. between identifying someone who needs help, offering value to position yourself as the authority. Because here's the thing too, when you do that in those, in those forums, when you are super helpful in Facebook groups or other people's forums and you answer questions, you're doing it publicly, right? So you're doing it in a way that is super helpful for the person whose question you're answering, but you're also kind of showing off to everyone else in that group that you know your stuff. That's different than someone calling you up and saying, hey, Samantha, can I pick your brain for an hour and a half about my new project and I'm not gonna pay you any money? That's a different proposition. Oh, a hundred percent. And that's exactly what ended up happening. I ended up actually having somebody fill out my contact form from that group. And they said, Hey, we've seen you in this group. We know you're the go-to person. I never said it. Nobody's ever touted that about me in this group because people don't know me, but they've been watching me. Yeah. And they said, we want to talk to you about it. And it happened to be a food personality here in LA who yeah. like has her own production company and everything. And I was like, Holy cow. <laughs> Like that was the plan, but it's never worked that well. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And I think the thing, a lot of people, I get pushed back on this a lot, right? And we know, we both know Dana Molstar from Boss Mom, who's kind of been a big inspiration for both of us. And in fact, that's kind of how we connected. I think kind of weirdly, you were a WP Elevation customer, but then we also kind of randomly connected through Dana or you introduced me to Dan. How did that happen exactly? So when I got on the call with you as my, uh, whether or not I was going to be a Mav, oh, I was right. accidentally signed in to Dana's Zoom because that's she was right. one of my clients. That's right. And you had actually, you had just gotten off the phone with um, the guy who does her podcast. That's <laughs> and right. he had just talked to you about her. That's so right. it was like this whole like, Matt, me, Dana, you. That's and right. It was perfect storm of like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How do you guys all know each other? Um, and oh, one bro. thing Dana says is get micro famous in someone else's community. And I get a lot of pushback on this from people saying, oh, you know, decision makers aren't in Facebook groups, busy people, busy decision makers aren't in Facebook groups. Now, that might be true in some cases. However, really busy people who are decision makers generally have staff and those staff are in Facebook groups doing researching and they go back to the decision maker and say, hey, I, this, this girl in this Facebook group has been super helpful. I've reached out to her. I want to tee up a call. We need to talk to her to get this thing done. And that's exactly how it's happened. I, so the one with the TV production company here in LA, it was not the lead person who reached out to me. It was somebody on her staff. Um, she ended up joining us for the call. And my biggest client, the other thing is, is it's not even necessarily their staff. It could be their friends. Yeah. So my biggest client date came from somebody who knew me in the group. Like we've been acquaintances. Uh, she's a lawyer and I've sent people to her for uh, templates, like contract templates and things. And she'll shoot people to me. She ended up sending me this person. And in all honesty, I had zero idea who they were and then ended up finding out they were huge. And I had just been living under a rock. Um, but, uh, but yeah, she ended up sending me somebody who is like an 11 year friend of hers. Wow. And yeah. so, and that's how I landed my biggest it's, client. It's the power of the connected network, isn't it? Um, yeah. uh, if, Hey, if you guys are finding this helpful or finding this valuable in any way, shape or form, and you would like us to keep doing this kind of stuff, please just drop a yes in the comments so we can get some feedback. It's the only way we can get feedback after the call we go through and we're like, oh, check this out. So many people are like really enjoying this. So when I ask you to put yes in the comments, it's so that we can review this after the show with the team and say, hey, 
There's tons of people here who are saying, yes, that means they like it, they're finding it valuable, they want you to keep doing it. Uh, that's a way for us to, uh, to get feedback. And also, if you do wanna know uh, when we are going live, just drop the word live in the comments to get notified via Facebook Messenger when we are going live. Um, all right, so I wanna come back and talk a little bit about um, specializing versus being a generalist. Now, you obviously specialize in the niche that you're serving and the types of services that you're offering. How have you, how have you managed your FOMO of, of going, all right, well, this is what we specialize in. Does that mean we're gonna miss out on all this other work because we're now just specializing in this? Oh my goodness. Um, it's really uh, apropos because I just had this conversation with a client trying to get them over that hump of no, 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 you, you need to, we need to niche down a bit and then, <laughs> and then you, can, uh, you can work with whomever you want, but your marketing has to be here. Um, so for us, specializing just really allowed us to live in our sweet spot. Um, so that's something that I know in Mavs we talk a lot about and it, it, it allows us to enjoy what we're doing more and it allows us to deliver a better product. So for us, as far as niching into what we deliver, that uh, took away all the FOMO because when you say, if all I could do is this, fantastic. And when you start to realize that you just love what you do, there's plenty of people out there that need that one specific thing. Um, so yeah, it's just a matter of being okay with it and knowing that you're just going to love it that much more. When you're talking about the type of people, because uh, this was the big one with my client today was... I niche to women only. And a lot of people be like, well, that's sexist or which was my client's <laughs> reaction. Um, or, uh, or uh, but then you can't work with men. Who's to say men don't need membership sites or websites? Well, sure they do. I just work better with women. Uh, that's who I feel I can deliver best for. But I still have some male clients. Even yeah. my biggest client, I work with her husband. Yeah. Um, so it, it's totally possible. And I even had, a potential client who was a male call me out on it and say, well, your site says you only work with women. Well, that's my preferred customer, but it doesn't mean I'm going to say no to you because you have different parts. Uh, so, <laughs> just you know, put on a dress. Just, it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> but it allows me to, to attract the people that I know light me up. Um, yeah, I've yeah, had yeah. bad experiences in the past with yeah. working outside my, my, sweet spot and outside the ideal client yeah. and I just know that those are not ideal and if they happen more as a one-off that's better preferably never but uh you know as you're as you're working through things um you're going to accept a few more things than you'd be willing to until you really get to that sweet yeah. spot but uh but yeah it's just a matter of knowing that I'm going to do my best work um uh, two questions how often do you say no to a client and what does that feel like? And uh, let's answer that one first, and then we'll do the second question. So no is a really hard one for me um, until recently. So I will say I'm a huge people pleaser. So saying no is like goes against everything in my core, <laughs> uh, because I want to help everybody. But recently, we took on a client where they asked for a discount. We made some adjustments to scope to make it work. It really wasn't something I wanted to do, but I couldn't say no. Um, and what I found was a lot of what Adam said, it pulled me out of doing work in the business so much so that it ended up costing me more money than the discount I gave them and the scope change. Um, so no became really easy after that. because I was like, no. I had this, I had this other experience where that didn't happen. And then this happened and I, I don't want to do it anymore. So we actually started just saying no and uh, being okay with it. Um, because I know that I can give my team the best and that uh, we had one other person ask for a discount. And I said, what I've discovered over the years is that when I give a discount, I don't do my best work. You're not super satisfied. And ultimately, it's not good for either of us. So we don't give discounts because it's yeah. just, it, yeah. we, that's not how we deliver. That's such a great line. I've found over the years when I give a discount, I don't do my best work and you're ultimately not satisfied. That is such a great line. I wish I'd taught yeah. you that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't. Um, talk to me about recurring revenue. 
recurring revenue has been the hardest thing for me in Mavericks. <laughs> it's one of the things that I know we're supposed to do, but I've always had that I didn't want to do care plans. And so how do I build in recurring revenue? And what I found was, it's not that I don't want to do care plans, it's that I didn't want to do care plans with the people I'd done them with before or the way that I'd done them before. Mm. So it was really figuring out how it was best going to work and setting up the team for success in it. Um, and what I found is that in building that and in getting that recurring revenue, because we're, uh, we're now, our recurring revenue is now at a place where I didn't even used to charge this for a one-off website, but I make it per month without building a website. Yes. Um, so, uh, it, yeah, exactly. So it's about the cost of about two to three websites. Um, and it affords me the ability to start looking at moving my business from all contractors to even being able to pay some of them on payroll and take uh, and do in-person retreats when all this COVID stuff ends with yeah. my team, all these things that I dreamed about. Yeah. Um, and one of the other big things uh, that I just, I just did is I bought swag so that I could send client gifts and I could, you know, have all these awesome things that I've been to gift giving is one of my love languages. Yep. So I'm like, yes, I can, I can send these out and I couldn't do it before, but with recurring revenue and being able to charge what, what we know is our worth, we can put that in now that that's part of our budget. I love it. Um, you know, it's not all, it's not all rainbows and unicorns, right? But I do want to say this, that, over the last two or three months, as the world has fundamentally changed and we have, you know, the highest unemployment rates right across the world since the Great Depression in the 1930s, we've had people hiring staff in, we've had people aspiring to hire staff in Mavericks. We've had people quit their job and go all in. I'm thinking about Jason Garcia, who's gone all in on his, on his new venture and actually walked out of his day job and his boss is looking at him going, are you a lunatic? Like, you know what's happening out there in the world? Um, as I said, it's not all rainbows and unicorns, and I'm not pretending that uh, that it, it you know it's easy. But what I love is the mindset that a lot of our community have, and the resilience that a lot of our community have. And I think if there's one thing that I'm really proud of, it's the the sense of community that we've built around WP Elevation and Mavericks Club that we've all been able to lean on each other to get through this time. Oh, a hundred percent. And for for myself. One of my clients just happens to be in that amazing niche where they hired us for enough work that I was like, okay, we're good. Like, I don't want all my eggs in one basket, but if nothing else came in, we're still okay. Yeah. And then leads came in. And one of the first things I did was I reached out when, you know, before Adam had all of his stuff in place, it was Adam, if I get this lead, are you available? Would you like the work? Um, and I think that that's just how the maps work. We're a family. And so if, one person's struggling, another person's going to come in and, and, you know, it, it's not, and it's not just like me handing out work, like Kat sent me my latest one. And so, you know, it's that same thing of if it doesn't quite fit with our niche, we have another person we can refer out. And so I just love that about Mavs. It's a, uh, it's definitely the support system. I know end of last year, I struggled with more m mental issues. Uh, I'd hit a, a bit of an overwhelm and the Mavs community was, what helped hold me up and get me over the hump and and get back to this like hey i'm in my sweet spot and i'm happy and everything's flowing yeah totally uh zach stepek who's watching says mavericks is one of the best decisions i've ever made truly my tribe by the way this isn't a plug for mavericks club um <laughs> final question i have for you before i let you go and i do want to say a huge thank you for you being generous with your time i know it's about almost 6 p.m in the afternoon there so it's, you're kind of heading into the the, the crazy times of you know bed and 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 uh, and dinner routines for the kids how old are your kids now uh, they are six and 10 and the six-year-old actually right before I came on camera was like, mommy, can you feed me a 30 <laughs> minutes? Give me 30 yeah, yeah. minutes. <laughs> yeah. So I do want to, I do want to let you go. But my final question is how do you, how do you separate, you work from home, how, you've got kids, how do you separate the working from home and then being in the home as a mom and a, a, a wife? How do you, what's the transition? <laughs> uh, so the <laughs> biggest thing, uh, well, my husband would say I probably don't do the best job of it, but uh, the best thing I can do is just leave the computer in the office. Um, yeah. if I, if I take the, the computer with me, uh, it's going to be open. I'm going to be getting notifications. So I try to turn off notifications, leave the computer behind, um, and really spend time and be invested, not be, you know, like out to dinner with the phone in front of my face. Mm. Um, 
so that that's the big thing. It's it's leave the devices in the office and uh, and be present. Love it. Uh, we've got a couple of rules. We have no devices in the bedroom uh, unless we desperately need to. Uh, unless we're like waiting on an overnight phone call, which is very rare, or if we desperately need to set an alarm, which is also very rare, uh, we have no devices in the bedroom. That was a decision we made before Oscar was born. And so my device sits in, in my office overnight, um, except the Kindle. The Kindle is allowed because you, uh, I prefer to read on a Kindle. And uh, we have no um, phones at the table, the dinner table, any of that kind of stuff. Um, and I, the thing I'm struggling with at the moment is similar to what Adam was saying. I walk out of here and I'm in the family home, like the other side of that door and I'm jazzed and I'm pumped and I'm talking about, you know, all this stuff. And, and Amy's like, yeah, there's a newborn there. Oscar's going crazy. I need a break. I don't care how cool your day's been. Like, uh, so I just need to make a transition to get out of here and get into the family home, which might just mean a walk around the block, something really simple. Like that, or I might take Adam's advice and just start playing guitar right. for ten minutes before I transition. <laughs> I think that I think that's awesome. I think with my kids being a little bit older, it's a little bit different. Yeah. Um. So for me, my kids actually, I try to involve them a lot more in the business. So when I walk out of here, jazz, I can say, "Oh my gosh, mommy just landed this lead or this and that." And uh, so like when we had the lead that came in as a like a food personality, I said, "Mommy's got this really important call." It's like with a Giada type person because my daughter loves Giada and she's like, oh, that's awesome, mommy. <laughs> so, you know, I get them involved and so they can be dads with me. My husband works long hours. So usually by the time he's home, I'm already out of the, the cycle yeah. of business. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so the kids get excited with me. We have a little bit of fun and then we go on with our day. <laughs> awesome. Hey, Samantha Johnson, affectionately known as Sammy J within the Mavericks community. Thank you so much for your time and coming on here and sharing a bit of your story uh, on Facebook and with our audience. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. Awesome. And I look forward to hanging out with you in a couple of weeks at uh, the virtual MavCon online. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, so Thanks, Sammy. Take care. Bye for now. <laughs> Bye for now. All right, gang, that is Samantha Johnston uh, live from Southern California. And uh, thank you so much for joining in today. <clears throat> a big thanks to Sammy J and to uh, Adam Silverman, my good friends who are, and again, in the interest of complete transparency, they are both Mavericks uh, members. Uh, give me a, by the way, Mavericks Club is our mastermind for high-performing agencies. So if you are an agency and you want to go to the next level, uh, then hit us up uh, and talk to us about Mavericks. You can either uh, email support at wpelevation.com with the subject line Mavericks or just leave a comment on this live stream with the word Maverick and we will take it from there. All right, coming up tomorrow on our live stream, the complete method for winning clients from home. I'm going to walk you through my winning clients from home matrix, the nine core things that I think you need to address and understand and have dialed in in order to win good quality clients from home. I'm not talking about clients who are gonna pay you 500 bucks for a website. I'm talking about real clients with real budgets and real projects. How do you position yourself as an authority? What is the process that you can set up to take complete strangers and turn them into good paying clients and run this business from home? You've heard a lot of success stories this week from Noah Britton, from Adam Silverman, from Samantha Johnston. Join us in the training tomorrow, the way to uh, get notified about that is again to just drop the word live in the comments here drop the word live in the comments to get notified when we go live it is tomorrow morning uh, australian time it'll be 10 a.m uh, in australia it'll be 5 p.m on thursday afternoon in los angeles and 8 p.m uh, thursday night in if you're on eastern time in new york uh, and uh, we will be live here again talking about the com the complete method for winning clients from home. There you go. Akil Z just did it. Drop the word live there. And if you're interested in talking to us about Mavericks, just email support at wpelevation.com with the subject line Mavericks if you'd like to know more about our Mavericks Club Mastermind. Thank you to WP Elevation for leaving that comment there so I could bring it up on the screen. I do believe that's probably Ben, you legend. Good work, Ben. Thank you very much for that. Uh, what else have I got? Oh, are there any questions? Does anyone have any questions? I've got about two and a half minutes, I reckon, I can hang around, which probably means five minutes I can hang around. Uh, has anyone got any questions at all about what we've been talking about this week? Uh, is anyone thinking about starting their own 
business from home and has some questions? Is anyone struggling with their business from home and they need to take it to the next level? Has anyone got any specific questions that you want to ask? Now would be a really good time. Sharon Yates says, looking forward to the next live session, Troy. Always enjoy the valuable information you share with us. Thank you very much, Sharon, for the feedback. I really appreciate it. I Genuinely, feedback like that actually makes it all worthwhile and uh, is why I get out of bed and do this every day. Um, and V Evans also says, I love this, thank you very much. V, V says, these live sessions are really valuable. Thank you, V. Hey, tell me, what is, what is valuable about these live sessions? Is it just that you know that you're not alone and there's a whole bunch of other people around the world doing a similar thing? Is that what's most valuable about this? Are you actually, uh, are you actually learning some nuggets from these sessions? Uh, what is, what is the, um, what is most valuable about this? And by the way, WP Elevation says, it's Maddie, not Ben. Oh, Maddie, you're a superstar. Good on you. Thank you. Um, Hassan Abbas says, amazing session. How to land first client with no portfolio? That is a great question, Hassan. So here is the advice I give everyone. If you have no portfolio, you, I, I don't, in fact, I don't think you need a portfolio, but what you do need, what will seriously help is some social proof, right? Social proof being a testimonial or a case study of someone you've worked with in the past who can categorically say, hey, I was struggling with this problem and then when I worked with Hassan, this problem got solved and the, this is the outcome. So what you want is you want to be able to demonstrate a transformation. I can tell you, I can show you hundreds, if not thousands of people who when they started, and I, I, I don't say this to brag, I'm just proving a point here, right? This is social proof. When they started working with us, they had no recurring revenue in their business. I'm thinking about uh, Johnny Flash just comes to mind uh, in Virginia, in the US. When he started with us, he quit his job. He was building websites. He had no recurring revenue. He built up his recurring revenue to the point now where he's got a team. He takes every Thursday afternoon off and goes to the movies with his wife while his four kids are still in school. So they get home before four o'clock when the kids get home. And he has every Thursday afternoon with his wife at the movies because he's got enough recurring revenue in the business that he can afford to say no to projects that are not a good fit. That is just one example. I, literally, I could wheel out hundreds, as I said, if not thousands of examples of people who had no recurring revenue, worked with us, and now have enough recurring revenue that they have security in their business and in their you know, financial situation. So that's what we call a transformation. So Hassan, the question for you is, how do you help your clients transform? What is the transformation that you offer your clients? You just need to get one client to attest to that and to say that you can do that. You don't even need a portfolio. You don't need to show uh, any projects. You just need a client to genuinely, authentically say that you are able to give them that kind of transformation. Now, if you don't have a client that can do that right now, my suggestion would be that you go get one. And even if you have to work at cost, I don't advocate working for free, but even if you have to work at cost and say, look, I'm happy to do this for you at cost, which is gonna be you know, super cheap, but uh, the, the flip side of that is, um, if we get this right, I want a testimonial, I want you to be able to say that we helped you make this transformation. And then when, you, when the project is successful, get some PR for the client and yourself. So write a press release. Seriously, jump onto Google, there's a whole, there's a whole thing around this. Write a press release uh, showcasing them as the hero, but also including you as the company or the person that helped them make that transformation, okay? So you get some leverage out of it, they get some free PR, they get a great project and a great win and you get their testimonial. That's how you do that. Uh, how to charge a client for a knowledge session halfway through a conversation? This is a great question from Kaz Walter. How to charge a client for a knowledge session halfway through a conversation? Well, ideally, Kaz, what you do is you let them know that there is a fee before you get halfway through a conversation. So here's what I do. If I'm having a conversation with someone and I realize that they wanna pick my brain, the first thing I say is, is cool. It's more than happy to have a brain picking session. Um, I'm gonna send you a link to my calendar and a payment link. Uh, you should know this is what I charge for what we call discovery sessions or a brain picking session. Um, if you're up for that, then I'll send you a link right now. What's your email address? Uh, if we get on a call and they just start, I mean, first of all, I just don't answer the phone, right? So no one can get on a call with me unless they're booked in the calendar. So rule number one, put your phone on silent, turn it upside down, ignore the notifications. It's gonna give you back your life, I promise you. I'm just gonna say that again. Turn your phone on silent, put it upside down and ignore the notifications. Check it every now and then to make sure your husband or your wife are not ringing you and there's no problem with the kids. Other than that, ignore your phone. It's gonna free up your life, okay? So no one can call me without being in my calendar. 
I have a call due in about five minutes with Sam, a different Sam, but one of our Mavericks uh, from Colorado because she's in my calendar. So I'm going to call her and we're going to have a conversation. But I don't take calls unless you're in my calendar. So uh, I hope that helps. Kaz, just put a bit of a barrier in front of yourself and make yourself a little unavailable, a little bit unavailable. Um, Akil Z says, where does the rubber meet the road more, WP Elevation or Mavericks? Akil, my answer to that question is this. If you are just starting out and you are doing, you know, less than six figures a year, WP Elevation is probably the best place to start. Mavericks is a serious investment um, and it is a minimum 12 month commitment. So if you are already up and about, you've already got a successful business, you're already profitable, uh, you're doing you know over six figures and you can afford to make an investment in your business and Mavericks Club is gonna help you get there faster. Um, I hope that helps answer that question. Um, Nancy Seeger says, the tips, the tips, awesome. Uh, and uh, Kaz Walter says, these sessions pump you up. Awesome, that's what I like to hear. Thank you, Kaz, really appreciate the feedback. It helps uh, keep me motivated. V Evans says, great strategy, ideas, and lots of nuggets. Excellent. I'm glad. Super helpful. Robert Mecklen says, learning great information, being part of a great community, and enjoying the live connection. Me too, Robert. I cannot tell you how much it helps me connecting with you guys every day. Um, I said to my wife recently, you know, when I die, there'll be four people at my funeral, but 150,000 people watching on live streams on the internet. Uh, Sharon says, I like hearing from others that have or are in the process of pivoting their business from doing the work to coaching others. Their nuggets of jumping to the next step is so inspiring and it gives me the faith to keep moving forward. Awesome. Love, love, love. Uh, and Michelle, who is our customer success manager in the Philippines, the most valuable about this call is that it tells you success has no shortcuts. It's a long, scary road, not all rainbows and unicorns. Exactly. We don't pretend that it's all rainbows and unicorns. And uh, thank you, Michelle, for tuning in. And thanks for doing such an amazing job looking after our customers. You are one of a kind, and we just love having you as part of the family. So I wanted to publicly acknowledge that. Thank you, Michelle. Um, and and uh, I will give Oscar a big hug from you. All right, cool. I do need to bounce out of here. Uh, you can find more information uh, about our Blueprint course there at courses.wpelevation.com slash wpelevation dash blueprint. That link is also in the comments. So uh, check that out. Um, and if you want to know, as I said, more about Mavericks, just leave the comment Mavericks, the word Mavericks in the comments here and we'll, uh, we'll get in touch. Robert Mecklen says, go for 1 million live stream, 1 million viewers, 1 million viewers on a live stream. That's a pretty good goal to have. Or 1 million live streams. That's a lot of live streams. I'd have to be doing about 10 a day, I think for many years. All right. Just want to again, recap what's coming up tomorrow. We're going to be talking about the complete method for winning clients from home. I'm going to reveal all nine parts of the winning clients from home matrix. And uh, I'm going to walk you through uh, what that looks like and how to start getting it set up in your business. Uh, so looking forward to that same time tomorrow. Drop the word live in the comments to get notified when we go live and we will hook you up via Facebook Messenger and send you a notification so you can join in. And please share this with anyone you think might benefit from it. Anyone who you think could benefit from watching these live streams, please uh, share it with them out. All right, I'll look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Until then, I'm Troy Dean. Go Elevate.